I think there's no question that badminton is a very complex and difficult sport, especially in terms of racket skills. And many of the problems already start with the wrong grip. In this video, I want to focus on the two biggest ones in my eyes that can totally ruin your game or completely limit your options in terms of shots and power you have with the racket and also give you some guidelines for a good grip that will definitely help you to boost your game, be more flexible and have more variations and options in the long run. I want to start right away with maybe the biggest mistake in terms of uh, holding the racket. A lot of beginners are doing that and it's having the index finger up here on the grip. You see that so many times with beginners, they hit the shuttle like that. To understand why this is harming your game, you have to understand first how to create power or speed with the racket. And you can say there are two different options. One option is by rotation of the arm. So you can see now I'm rotating with the forearm or now I'm also rotating with the upper arm and I'm creating quite a lot of speed here in the racket head with a short movement. So this is very helpful, very um, important, especially for uh, full power shots like a smash or a clear, but it only works if you have the right grip. So now you can see I'm holding the uh, standard grip or V grip and now the racket head is also pointing into the direction where the rotation goes. So this is one option. On the other hand, we can use also a lot of power from the fingers so we can already if you can see here generate a lot of speed just by being loose and then tight with the grip and we can combine it by stretching out the arm so this is the other option or good option to generate a lot of power in a short amount of time especially but there we need another grip or we need other grips there are two different options on the forehand side if we turn the racket from the V grip around 90 degrees we uh, come to the panhandle grip so holding the racket like this and now you can see I can tighten the grip, create or generate a lot of power from that. Or if I go into the other direction and now have the thumb up here, once again around, around 90 degrees, now I have the so-called thumb grip and once again can generate a lot of power with this movement. So those are the two options and now the big problem comes. If we put the index finger up here, the problem is we cannot really rotate. Like the, we usually tend to have a panhandle grip with that uh, index finger. We can also turn the grip, but no matter what we do, we will have big problems rotating with the forearm. The problem is the wrist will always start moving, moving and uh, we will lose all the power from our rotation here. So it is almost impossible to hit rotation shots with the finger up here. On the other hand, if we hold the finger up here, it's also really hard or almost impossible to get like space in between or use finger power in a controlled way. So. Basically, we lose both options to create speed and power and we totally have to rely on the swing of the arm and the wrist movement. And the wrist is quite good to change the direction, especially want to play with a good touch at the net, but it is not helpful to create any power. So good players use most of their power, especially from overhead shots, from rotation and being loose and then also here tightening the grip in the end. And no one you will ever see a good player having the index finger up here on the grip. So the second big mistake is always having the same grip and even if you're not having the finger up here you need different kind of grips. Especially beginners when they're not having the finger up here many of them are using a normal, I just showed you panhandle grip. Uh, so now you can use a little bit more finger power but still you're very limited because you can only use that. And for for example overhead shots you want to use more rotation uh, in the arm to hit more power or also in the front court you want to have a different grip um, and not always the panhandle grip. It will also affect your footwork in a very negative way because now if you hold the racket like that you will be mostly parallel to the net with your upper body and that will cause um, yeah, like bad footwork patterns to the rear court. There you're just running backwards, hit and then you will most likely when you have a little bit of pressure run two three steps more out of the court and that will make it almost impossible to reach the next one if your opponent plays to the net. Also in the front court, you will most likely um, run all the way to the net and the way to the rear court will become really long. And there's also no good way of hitting the shuttle in the front court with the panhandle grip when you're under the net. So if you look at good players, what they're doing in the rear court, there's not only rotation in the arm, but also rotation of the body. So they turn the body before the shot and then during the shot, they turn the other way around. And then you can see they land in a position where they can push out and they are not running out of the court. So they are quickly ready for the next one, they get fast out of the corner and that will be very hard for you if you're only holding the panhandle grip with overhead shots. 
But that doesn't mean that the panhandle grip is bad. There are also shots where it's super useful, for example the net kill. But if you look on a higher level you can also see um, a lot of different variations of the grip. So for example when I'm very low and deep in the backhand corner I'm actually turning the racket almost to a panhandle grip to still hit it, maybe slice it a little bit. So here I have to be very flexible with my grip, adjust it to the situation. And there are so many different situations where um, all kinds of grips can be useful. So very important to always have a loose grip in between shots and be able and be ready to get into the right or perfect grip for the certain shot. So not everything is as easy to see like the index finger up here. There are also other problems with the grip and I want to give you three guidelines that uh, in my experience help a lot to get a good handling for the grip, especially in between shots. So you have a, a good relaxed standard grip from where you can get into all different kinds of grips for the next shot no matter how fast it goes. So first important thing is you want to be really loose with the grip and a good sign of that is how much space you have up here when you're holding the standard V grip in between the, the point where thumb and index finger come together. So when you're very tight, there's no chance of uh, getting a finger in between here. If you're a little bit more loose, you can see that then you get easily in, then there's space and you can make these small like slicing movements. That should be possible always when you're waiting for the shuttle, you should be as loose. Next thing is the order of fingers. And when you look from the side, you should have that order. So the index finger should be on that side. Once again a sign, if, if it's too high up you will not see it from that side of the racket, but it should be above the thumb. A lot of players are holding the racket more like this, so this is okay when you really tighten the grip, hit, then you will get into that order, but usually when you wait for the shuttle you should have that grip with a pinky, ring finger, middle finger, thumb and the index up here. The third thing is something I just learned recently and I think it's super helpful to control your standard grip and if you look now from the other side and if you focus on the knuckle of the pinky, so the small finger, it should be right above the grip. So if I put a needle in here, it should also hit the grip underneath. Many players have it more like this, so now you see it's not above the grip and if I look from the other side, the racket is lying um, right here inside the hand and that will also give me less uh, opportunities, less chances to use finger power. If I go into the grip I just showed you, you can see now there's more space in between the grip and my palm so I can use actually finger power a lot better no matter if I'm using uh, forehand or backhand and I'm also a lot better in changing the grip when the shuttle comes from that position uh, if I'm loose, I can use my fingers also for turning the racket very quickly. If the racket is too far in, it gets a lot harder. You can try that out and your palm is sometimes blocking the rotation, like the turning of the racket. Okay, so much about the mistakes for the grip and the three good guidelines for a good standard grip when you're waiting for the shuttle. I hope they will help you to maybe control your own grip or if you're a coach, maybe control or give some guidelines for your players as well how to actually hold the racket when you're waiting for the shuttle or when you're waiting um, for overhead shots when you also have the loose standard grip for example then the same thing counts like the knuckle, the finger order and also space and being loose up here. If you have any more questions about the grip uh, or any more wishes for future videos as usual write them down in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and then see you next time. Bye bye.